Thank you. And uh, hello, Vice President. Uh, I have a question on the attacks, but you already responded. My question will be, therefore, on money. I mean, how can you tell us that what happened with Germany and the strategic gas storage owned by Gazprom cannot happen anymore? And what do we do about Huawei investments, for instance, in critical infrastructure? Is there any plan to actually address the fact that such kind of companies cannot have any say in our infrastructure? And second point, what's inside this democracy, defense of democracy package that uh, President of Commission came and announced in front of the Parliament? We were all very happy about it, but what will you put in it that will make sure that infrastructures that are critical for our democracies, like, for instance, the Belgian Parliament, who could not uh, actually have a debate on Uyghurs, will not be attacked anymore. What kind of sanctions, what kind of protections? Thank you. Thank you. Dear Vice President Chinas. Thank you, President. Um, cher ami, the, 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 I, let me repeat what I said in my opening statement, which I think covers partly uh, your question, that the era of naivete is over. <laughs> uh, for many years, for decades now, there was a certain feel-good factor in the European Union, a certain innocence about the type of threats that we were facing, uh, a feeling that somehow it will work out. Well, it, it took a pandemic to find out that we do not manufacture uh, masks and ventilators anymore. <laughs> and that our raw materials of pharmaceutical industry is not under our control. It took a war to realize that we need our own uh, umbrella and reliable energy providers. And now it takes this uh, hybrid uh, constant threat against our critical infrastructure to make sure that we have a level of protection that is tantamount to the threat. So on your first question, yes, when uh, the Critical Entities Resilience uh, Directive and NIS2 Directive are implemented, now front-loaded, as we're recommending today, this would require from all member states to have an automatic coverage and notification of all critical entities under, uh, uh, that, that matter to the single market. So that would give us this level of protection, this shield that we were lacking. As to your second question, uh, yes, I think we have, I appreciate also the great work you did on this information on the uh, ad hoc committee that you chaired, but I think you should prepare for a meaningful, a meaningful set of rules under the Defense Pro uh, Protection and Defense of Democracy initiative that the President announced, which would cover the issue of foreign intervention, propaganda, and fake news which is tarnishing our democracies. Thank you very much. Madame Marketa Grigorova. Ah, excuse me. Do you have an addition? It was too early. Yes. Yeah, very good question. Thank you for your response, and I, I like very much this ping pong, by the way. Um, my, my, my second question is, I mean, of course, the era of naivety is over, but how do you react when you learn that the German head of uh, cyber security is actually uh, working uh, with Russian interest? I mean, when do we, will, when we will we have a total cleanup of our institutions that are supposed to protect and guarantee our security? Commissioner? In my view of security, what matters is to have in place robust, systemic, regulatory rules, systems that allow us to defend ourselves regardless of the individuals involved. And I think this is a golden rule for security. Uh, any kind of individual with any kind of pathologies, real or alleged, it's not up to me to, to issue an opinion, 
would have a much more difficult role to be a loose cannon <laughs> if the system in place is robust. And to also link uh, this answer to your first question, you were asking about uh, uh, Huawei and, and, and the way of foreigners uh, uh, including um, attempting to control our critical infrastructure. We have precisely set up these rules, like the 5G toolbox, that was an ideal, I think, in my view, framework that we developed together with Thierry Breton to set up the parameters within which each member state could proceed with 5G technology instead of decreeing one single model top-down, take it or leave it. So I think that through these intelligent approaches to security, which combine very strong regulatory uh, measures, and at the same time, this new awareness about the need of security, the possibility for individuals to play games would be significantly reduced. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Glucksmann, for my mistake, but our next speaker is Madame Maketa Grigorova.